YouTube. I'm back from the VDTA and I wanted to talk vacuum math. So what happens when you add a compact TriStar with a floating Hoover constellation? Well, you get a zero G. And a zero G is really a cool little vacuum that floats. Now the zero G has a few party tricks other than floating uh, to get it by and I'll explain those to you. So I think the first thing to understand about the zero G is it is a bag vacuum which is a huge advantage in today's market with all these bagless vacuums that are disposable. This is built to last and you know talking to uh, one of the principals of the company um, this is an engineer's nice dream. Everything's pretty well thought out and with, you know, the, not, the good balance of affordability and what the consumer wants in mind and innovation. So I pulled out the retro vacuums just to kind of prove a point. But I want to talk about some of the innovation, what's going on here. So if we pull the, back, the hose off here, There's a nice yellow lever, by the way, you can tell what's there. We have one of these bags. And this is a self-sealing or bag that seals like that. And that keeps the dirt from going out. And then they have a patent pending right now on the material of the bag. Apparently, it's the same stuff surgeons are using in their, in their masks in the operating room. It's got silver infused in it to keep... Uh, dust not only from coming out, but it's an antibacterial as well. So, wonderful bag material. And the other thing about these bags is they're really reasonably priced as well. So, I'm going to pull the retro vacuum out, and we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between it and the TriStar. Compact, just to show you. So first off, if you open an old vacuum, the dust goes flying everywhere. Yuck. With this, you seal that up, and you dispose of the bag. You can see I got a, a pretty new one in here. Now, the next thing is there's an inner bag. Well, they used to do that too. If we look at our TriStar, I'm going to pull this bag out. There's an inner bag. Uh, but it's not quite the same material as this. This is a wonderful material. They're using this on commercial vacuums. And this stuff, it's really tough. So if for some reason you're stuck up glass or something really bad and you want to break the bag or your maid doesn't change it right or whatever happens this saves the motor and this is really important and I wish that other manufacturers would have something more like this and then you can actually rinse this out or replace this and this snaps in with if you can hear magnets um, so you know what's going in right and then you have a nice carbon filter here for pet odors uh, there as well then we have some airflow glides in here, kind of like the old Electrolux is used to use. Um, and you'll, you'll see airflow glides on a lot of other modern vacuums as well. But that helps fill the bag evenly so the vacuum doesn't uh, tip or tilt when it's floating in the air. Which is actually an important thing on a design like this. Now the other thing about this, you have a performance indicator right there. So if the bag is full or has it clogged. That will show you as well. Now, getting to the rest of the canister, we have a very nice handle. This grip is really nice to use, and it's clearly marked carpet bare floor. We have a nice stainless steel telescoping wand, really high quality. The foot pad here is soft, so you're not going to scratch your power head, but you also it tells you where to put your foot. Now you also have a performance indicator on this power head. Turn that on. Well, this power head's pretty well thought out. It's got a, a metal reinforcement on the neck. It stands up by itself, no problem. And this might be one of the best power heads I've seen that locks in the upright position. 
And then for your soft carpet, you can have the Venturian effect through there and open those vents. So you're actually not losing suction there. You're, you're gaining or staying about the same. And then there's some nice viewing windows in here so you can be reassured your brush is working. Now, the bottom of this is plastic. And a lot of people are always saying they want a middle bottom. And I, I couldn't disagree more with that statement. Uh, plastic is better for sound absorption. It also allows them to mold this in such a way that it's to the vacuum. You're not limited to stamp sheet metal, which means we have nice big cutouts for big things like cat litter, cat fur to go in there, dog fur, Cheerios, all that stuff. They also have these nice side vents, which will suction channel through there, which we've seen on a couple other vacuums, but not as big as this. So I suspect because these have a patent on them, they're going to work much better. And then you just have your standard uh, nylon brush roller with a really nice chevron design. And the wheels, they got metal axles, and then they have a piece of rubber in here as well. And it is made for zero G, so this is their own brand of nozzle. So this was what else was in the box, and that, that is a lot of stuff, especially for this price point. I think my favorite touch uh, would be having a separate plastic wand, which you can not only put on the stainless steel wand for high reach, but it, it gives your bare floor tool a lot lighter feel. So this whole thing weighs maybe a pound, pound and a half. So that will be nice in your hand for lightweight. Now they do give you a really hefty uh, dusting brush. And whatever material this is made of feels very, very solid. Uh, and then, of course, it has horsehair dusting bristles as well. And then this is, you've probably seen one of these before, but it's an excellent tool. It's an upholstery slash dusting brush combo. They give you a fair size crevice tool, just for record, in terms of size. And then this is what's exciting. If you saw this sitting in the background, then you saw that it was electrified. This might be one of the only electrified stair couch tools in the industry. So that means this is going to eat up pet hair, no problem. And it's shaped in such a way that you can get into the crevices of the stairs, which I'll show you later. Now they also give you, rather than storing the tools on board the vacuum, which adds weight, what was done is they give you a bag. That is exactly what they do with central vacuums, and I have no problem with the manufacturer even doing this because it simplifies things. And I think they, this zero G, these guys seem to really spend money where it counts, but when they know that a customer might not care or might just be throwing the tools in a bag anyway, I think it's a good move. We see Dyson doing this with some of their stick vacs. We see this on central vacs. And we've seen, you know, really high-end manufacturers like uh, Simplicity and uh, Recar do this with some of their vacuums as well. So I have no problem doing this. Now, the other thing that this vacuum came with was a demo bag. Well, these are not sold door to door, don't fear. Um, the reason the demo bag is there, if you can read that, uh, is they know so many people are going to crap vacuums and these trash vacuums that when they get this, this is actually going to fill up your first bag. So they've made a bigger hole in the vacuum bag so you can see all the junk it picks up and it's also a uh, just a paper material as opposed to the standard uh, silver line patent pending HEPA material that they are using here and so, so that's that's cool um, that it comes with that so you can see what it picks up and maybe we'll use this in my house a little bit later so let's go ahead and vacuum with it and see how it does now, like every modern vacuum, this has the lifetime belt or a long time belt feature. So what that means is if you vacuum along, you can see the red light turned on. about that is how instantaneous that happens. Some of them it takes a little bit longer, but that's just instantaneous. And that's really nice to see that in a vacuum. 
So even though this nozzle really isn't on anything else, I feel like it's pretty solid, again, especially for the price point. Okay, folks, so I think the biggest question that I had when I saw this project was how does it do on stairs? So with, with this vacuum, oh, it looks like the dog has decided to join us for the review. What do you think about that, Fuffa? I don't think you're going to like that. No dogs like vacuums. Anyways, so my worry was, is it going to float off the stairs? Because the Hoover that floated did have that problem. So if you look at how this is made, you can see that a little bit of that hangs off the stairs. And that's really ingenious because that allows the machine to vent downwards and keeps the machine from floating. So it's actually sitting just on the bottom of the machine on the stairs. So that really makes this quite genius, uh, the fact that it just sits there like that. And by the way, this thing is super light. I would have no trouble lifting this in and out of a car all day or something like that. That really did a good job. Uh, so the way this is shaped, that allows you to get in the corners, get in there without having to pull the tool off. I can say I'm, I'm really impressed with the results of this. I wish more manufacturers would include this. And so this is our carpet pickup test. We have cat litter. We have this white stuff as flour. We have a breakfast cereal, and then we have fresh dog hair for my dog, and because this thing was so powerful at the show, I decided to throw a little bit more dog hair than normal at it because I know it's going to do very well after, again, playing around with this. So let's see how the Zero-G does. <laughs> See how that did. Man, that really creamed the carpet nicely. That looks nice, at least. Let's see. Well, got no pet hair, no cereal, no fine dust. Now, a little piece, one piece of cat litter right there. That might, actually, that might be a nail from the installation of my carpet. No, I don't think there's anything stuck in there. Let's look at the bottom of the nozzle. Oh, I do hear some stuff rattling about, and that's normal, especially the way this nozzle is designed. It's really interesting. Stuff's going to tumble in here a little bit more than normal. 
Uh, and partially that's because of the vents in here, partially that's uh, just because of the shape. It's a little bit squared in the back up here. It's rounded here, but square here. Uh, but nothing's falling out, which is more important. And it did edge clean very well. Oops. I don't know if you guys can see, but it went right up to the edge. So I am impressed with that. Let's do some more vacuuming with this and see how it does. floor pickup test. We're going to do it first with the nozzle. Now power and heads are always the most interesting thing on a bare floor pickup test because you can always change out the bare floor tool but you can't always change out the nozzle. So we're going to do it with the valve closed. To be fair we're going to have the point of view camera on as well. fell out of here because of the square uh, on that one side but again if you went straight to carpet or continued vacuuming it would get sucked in there I just wasn't running the machine long enough for that but as far as yeah it picked up everything the flower the cereal cat litter and you saw the dog hair just fly into this the way this is designed with these cuts this is very bare floor friendly especially with these wheels I'd highly recommend using this nozzle on bare floor So we're going to try the bare floor tool on bare floor. Now this is uh, the commercially available bare floor tool. So if for some reason you didn't like this performance of this, you could change it out. But let's see how it does. sucked up everything. Now some of the hair did get caught in here and again this is this is a characteristic of this style of bare floor tool. We could try this bare this machine with a different bare floor tool and it would do uh, a lot better in terms of pet hair but everything else in terms of pickup it's fine and of course this would just suck in here next time you turn the machine on. So really not a concern but just something to keep note that when you're done with this machine you're putting away, you'll probably have to suck that off. Really simple, just like so. Just like that before you put it away.
years. Well, that was pleasant to use. As far as its practical application, uh, if you can get over kind of the, the shape of this, it, it kind of reminds me of some other cleaners on the market who uh, sell for much higher, but it actually maneuvers really well. And that power hop nozzle maneuvers very well and actually gets very, very low as well on there. Um, if, you, if you can get over that, the looks of that, um, and, you know, you don't want to buy one of the, you know, the more expensive canister options. And the value of this is what I think really is strikes home is this is, they're asking uh, Sears pricing on these canisters and it, you're definitely getting a pretty high-end product in it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this really is an engineer's nice dream um, with it. And the 30 foot cord, the long hose, all makes for this uh, machine really nice to use in a large home. As far as would I recommend it, as of right now I do. Um, even though this is not a uh, manufacturer that's been around a hundred years, you know, but people, you know, you if you're willing to buy Dyson or Shark or any of, any of that stuff that's really bad, this is really quite good. In fact, I would say this competes very nicely with the Mila C2 canister right now. I would say it, in terms of its maneuverability and feature set, that it competes with the SIBO K3 canister. I would also say that if you have a Patriot or a Compact TriStar, you'll feel right at home with this, and I think you'll find this far more pleasant to use. If you're going from an old Arius Electrolux, this is definitely a lot better. So these guys at Zero G, they really studied their game, and for a you know market like how fresh to market this product is, it's really good. They used all, they use very few off-the-shelf pieces, which is really impressive to me. Like they did use an off-the-shelf wand, they used an off-the-shelf uh, hose end. But this is all really good quality, and this is central vat quality on here, so I'm very pleased with that. The fact that they designed their own power head versus just throwing a vessel verk or a lin house on there, really amazing. Um, I think the other thing that's really amazed, amazing to me is that they designed their own bag. And the bag makes a lot of sense, the shape of it makes sense, the fact the vacuum floats, that's really kind of a cool party trick. Um, is it better than a castor vacuum? Honestly, I think it's about the same. Um, but it's definitely less complicated mechanically than a castor vacuum, so you could say there's less to break the way that this is made. The other thing is it's got a full wraparound bumper, and a lot of vacuums in this price point don't have that either. It also is a performance check indicator. So this checks all the boxes for me. So please definitely comment below, like, hit that subscribe button, and consider checking out our Patreon, which helps videos like this happen.